we had them down on Old Orchard, we had them on Butternut, Sherrill Road, Rice Road, there was branches, but pretty much every tree that we had on our road came from off the right-of-way. They weren't trees that were on the right-of-way. One of the biggest things we did years ago was cut back trees on the right-of-way, and it's one of the best ways to get complaints from residents. <laughs> Nobody wants their trees cut, but then we hear from the residents tonight, Mr. Murphy, talk about the electric going off. Well, why is the electric going off all these times? It's because the tree branches and the trees taking the wires down. I mean, that's the problem, but nobody wants their trees cut or trimmed until you have the storm when the branches come down and rip your wires down. So then when you have no electric, well, then, sure, everybody wants their trees cut. But other than that, you know, um, the county has the same issues on Back Creek Road when the wire's down and your truck's coming down the road or there's a branch down the street and the truck's got to back all the way out, it slows the operation down tremendously. And we had one truck that um, hit a frozen pile of snow and ripped the wing around and bent it. It took us, our guys two days of cutting and fabricating and fixing it back up and getting it ready again. So there's a lot of issues that happen. but. Like I say, when there's trees down the street, you get a big snowfall truck when it's snowing hard, and there's trees down, and they got to back all the way out of the street to get out of there. It really slows <coughs> them down. So, um, other than that, I mean, I'm not sticking up for the county, but uh, I mean, they were out today tree treating. I seen them at two o'clock this afternoon, south on uh, Chestnut Ridge Road, and they were doing Boston State out here. I mean, it wasn't a call I would have made, but uh, they were definitely out tree treating the road. So. I think that's uh, pretty much all I have tonight. All right. Thank you very much. Anything from the town attorney text? The town continues to keep me busy, uh, but nothing that requires a report this evening. Okay. Thank you. Councilman Munger. Uh, my apologies. I have reported downstairs that I would have nothing, but I forgot I do uh, want to bring up to the residents. Um, as liaison to solid waste in town, our contract expires this year. Uh, I am meeting with multiple different companies. I have a, uh, a meeting set up for next week with waste management to start discussing new contracts. I'm going to be looking into the possibilities of bringing bins into town, what those costs for the residents would be, uh, you know, do cost analysis for you to see what that is a good way to do, a good way to do things or not. Uh, but uh, that will keep me busy, I'm sure, for a little bit. And as things start to melt again, I'm sure I will be getting phone calls in regards to water. Uh, so I look forward to uh, fielding those. And uh, other than that, I think that's it for the evening. Uh, another congratulations from me to you, Jason. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much. All right. Councilman McCarty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I have two things. Uh, on this Friday, I'll be meeting with uh, Jenna Brinkworth, who is the community engagement uh, person for the tobacco-free Erie Niagara from Roswell Park. We're going to be discussing um, green easy signs, tobacco free signs to display in our parks. And she's also <coughs> going to share some information uh, for us about uh, information we could use on our social media page. So that'll be Friday at 10. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to have you. If not, no big deal. Certainly something I can handle. Um, Gary Huber informed us that uh, the New York State DEC fish stocking will be on 27th of March. Yep. Yeah, it, I have it written down as April. On March 27th, uh, 18 Mile Creek will be stocked with 650 brown trout. Uh, anybody interested in volunteering, uh, we're going to meet behind the town hall at 1 p.m. And uh, it doesn't take very long. It's certainly a lot of fun, and kids are certainly welcome. Um, I was the biggest kid last year, and the waiters stomped around the river. So hope uh, hope some residents can come out and make it. That's all I have. Uh, again, uh, I'd also like to congratulate you again for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Councilman uh, Lukachek. So a um, couple updates for Boston Planning Board. Um, <clears throat> North Boston All Boys, their proposal was accepted, and uh, they're going to be reviewing the final, uh, the upcoming meeting. If anyone is interested, their meeting is the first Tuesday, second Tuesday of every month down in the planning board room downstairs, and it is at 7.30 at night. Uh, one more update for the code review committee that we're establishing. 
we've got the kickoff meeting uh, scheduled for March 20th uh, at 7.30 in the planning board. That's just the kickoff meeting, and I'm sending out letters for the uh, board chairman and, and or their representatives to attend so we can get that established and um, running. Um, so, Supervisor Keating, it's about time you got that. <laughs> it only took you, what, a couple of years? <laughs> Two years. Right? And the clock funny. starts now for you, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. I've got one more thing I'd like to add. But may. Please do. Um, maybe Mitch would like to announce the meeting for the 15th for the chamber. Sure. Hmm? I'm sorry, Mitch. I should have done that for you. That's all right. <laughs> well, just so everybody knows, um, I am trying to put together a Boston Colvin Chamber of Commerce. Uh, so we're going to have our second meeting. This is a uh, formation meeting. It's an organizational meeting because uh, it doesn't actually exist yet. Um, but it will be uh, on the 15th at 6.30. And this time the meeting will be at the Colden uh, Community Center. Sorry. Last meeting was right here um, in Boston's, uh, the, uh, this room right here. Um, but uh, this upcoming one will be on the 15th in Colden at the... Uh, Community Center, and if anybody wants to come and attend, help, we're just trying to put together, you know, thoughts, ideas. Um, we're looking for an attorney, a CPA, maybe the town attorney is interested, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> CPA, uh, and, uh, and some funds to, to get it started. So, thanks. Thanks, Mitch. Sure. I do think the attorney for the town did say just a little while ago we were keeping him busy, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, town clerk? Tax collection is going well. Um, taxes are due March 15th without penalty. Um, there will be extended hours until 6 p.m. on March 14th and 15th. Um, due to the um, weather on Friday, there was no waste management garbage um, pickup. So that uh, garbage pickup that was for Friday was moved out to Saturday and Monday, but the schedule is back on track as far as Monday's pickup still continued for Monday. So really what they were just trying to do is make up for Friday's pickup Saturday and Monday. Um, but the rest of the week it will remain your scheduled day. That is all I get. Okay, thank you very much. <coughs> all right, uh, Jason, Kathy, the town boards are looking for volunteers. Yep. I have it on my report. Okay, thank you. I didn't read it. <coughs> um, so I guess for my, my report, I'll start off 30B. For all the boards, um, zoning board, uh, planning board, conservation advisory council, these are all volunteer boards. And uh, yeah, the people who volunteer on them, they, they put forth a lot of their time, you know, kind of like you know, us. You know, they, they, they want to see their, their community do things. Uh, they want to better their community. Uh, but they're always looking for volunteers. So whether it's DBA, planning board, et cetera, if you're interested in any, any of those groups or you want more information, they're all public uh, events, if you will. So you can certainly attend those events if you want to just kind of sit back, hear, hear what's going on, get a feel for something you're interested in, uh, move on to the next one if you so choose. But if you're interested, please submit a letter of interest uh, you know, to the town clerk's office, and from there it will be directed to the proper uh, chair, chairman for uh, those boards. Um, for, for, for my Primary report tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the first thing I'll, I'll, I'll touch base on, because uh, I know this uh, question has been out there for a while, is that uh, of course there's my vacated seat. Um, we are looking to appoint the uh, that that member uh, at the next board meeting. Uh, we had we had a preliminary discussion tonight when we were in the executive session. Uh, we, we discussed uh, some you know everything, and uh, we, we decided that we we're going to make that decision uh, at the next board meeting. So in two weeks, everybody will hear who uh, we, we have chosen. We've had a lot of great applicants. Very, very interested, very, very uh, diligent people. Uh, but we, we will be making that uh, appointment at the next board meeting. Uh, the, last week we had the HEAP outreach program. Uh, it, it was, it, it, went, it went fairly well. Uh, and um, and the um, one, th one thing that we learned that we'll, we'll probably try to do is uh, adjust that so it's actually earlier in January. We think we'll receive a little bit better attendance when, when that happens in January. 
Um, I've already started holding, as I've been discussing, uh, meetings with uh, engineering firms to discuss opportunities for to work on the drainage. Uh, drain, drainage, as we're about to see as this, all, all the wet snow starts to melt, will become an issue at some point. Um, Obviously, into the spring, it's not. It's, it will not be an overnight fix. There, there's no. There's no fooling anybody there. I mean, we have. We have a lot of ground to cover. We have a lot of lane miles of ditches and other things to work on. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully, once again, and as I've been discussing to anybody I've had the conversations with, uh, I'm, I'm looking for a plan. I'm looking for a, a way to identify what the town needs. It's not going to be just we're going to put in a culvert over here. Or we're going to clean out a ditch over there. Let's come up with an actual plan. We've got 36 square miles. We've got you know, a, a, an X amount of lane, lane miles of road. We have private property issues. Let's identify the need, do a needs assessment, identify it, have a plan, and then I and the board presents that to you, you as the citizens of the town of Boston. If you choose, if we choose to move forward with it, fantastic. If we don't, well, there's our plan, and very similar to our comprehensive plan and a master plan. But at least we have we have a direction to go. So that that is something that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Um, Next uh, next Tuesday, uh, to answer a couple of the residents' questions regarding the uh, the road conditions, uh, last last Friday, actually the town clerk and myself, we were here after we dug ourselves out uh, and traversed those roads. We I know exactly what all of you experienced. I drove down Boston State Road. I, uh, my phone was my, actually my first phone call was at 12:15 in the morning uh, when a, a fire truck was actually stuck on Back Creek Road uh, in over 10 inches of snow. Uh, that's a county road and not pointing fingers but again it's, it's something that we need to address because if our emergency services can't get out to the residents then we, we, we have bigger issues than just just the conditions of roads and plowing and everything else emergency services should be primary first and foremost um, uh, it's just that I, I, I really have a hard time when uh, accepting the fact that that is become almost the status quo lately for our town so Going forward, um, like I said, I've been trying to work with uh, the county, John Mills, uh, Char Charlie, and uh, Bill and I were, were meeting next Tuesday. We'll sit down and hopefully I can actually get some better answers for all of you. I've taken the pictures, I've taken the video. I have more data than they probably want to even see. Uh, they're probably well aware of a lot of it. Uh, but I, one thing I can tell you, and I will support our highway superintendent, we did have a calling contract here in the town of Boston. Big picture though, before I put any town piece of equipment down any of those roads, they need to be brought up to a standard because the reality is if our town trucks go down those roads in the condition that they're in, we're gonna have more broken wings, we're gonna have broken lease rings, we're gonna have we're gonna have front end alignments. It's gonna cost all this as a taxpayer more money. So we, we need to be smart about this. It's not just a quick once and done throw the you know, our town trucks, they do a great job. I will never ever say anything else other about our highway department. They do a great job, but I'm not gonna put their safety or anybody else's safety for that matter in risk. Uh, by putting those trucks down there. So again, this all comes to something that needs to be uh, addressed at a table and uh, with some level-headed minds, and hopefully we can move forward on it. So that's what I have to report on the uh, the county roads. Uh, our dog control officer, uh, she we just actually picked up a new jacket for her uh, to make her safe before the past one was a, a dark blue jacket. Now it's a high visibility green jacket that actually clearly says dog control officer on the back side. So not only uh, whether it's daytime or nighttime, high visibility, has reflective striping, clear identification. Just something to keep uh, our, our dog control officer safe while, while she's out on the roads, you know, day or night, depending on when the call comes in. Uh, I am uh, working with uh, the Erie County Clerk, uh, Mickey Kearns, on uh, the Thank You Bet uh, event. Uh, that will be on May 8th at, uh, from 10 a.m. to 12.30. Uh, it's a great program that Mickey Kearns has been uh, promoting and working on for quite some time now. Uh, that was one of our discussions that we had when I invited him down to my office so we could uh, kind of brainstorm and kick some ideas around uh, some additional services I'd like to bring to our township for all of you. Uh, but uh, again, thank you. That program is May 8th from 10 a.m. to 12.30. Uh, let's see. What else we have? Uh, yeah, you know, I have had a couple of residents ask me about the, the PESH audit, what exactly PESH is. Uh, PESH, and this pertains to the tractors that we have to sell. Uh, PESH is the equivalent to OSHA, that for those of you that aren't aware of what, it, uh, what, what that organization is. There's a division of the Department of Labor, and they come into municipalities. PESH is pu uh, Public Employee Safety Health. Uh, they come in and perform audits. Uh, if you take a look at your chairs, one of the things that uh, uh, you, you may have already seen at some point is that they're actually zip-tied. That was a PESH insurance requirement. Um, 
the, uh, the other option is, is going out and buying brand new chairs that cost in the neighborhood of about 275 to on the upper end, three, $500 per chair because they have the proper bars to lock them. Why do they want that? They want that because they don't want the chairs to be picked up and used as a weapon. That is the truth. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. Uh, but at, but at, on, on the back side of it, this is your this is your tax dollar. The most cost effective method, which is something that's recommended by Pesh, zip time. So here's your tax dollars at work for you. Um, outside of that, uh, Memorial Day, uh, that that's quickly approaching. If anyone is interested in helping out with the Memorial Memorial Day celebration. Uh, the town clerk and I, we, work, we, we started having uh, early preliminary conversation when she does have 30 seconds of time to actually breathe after tax collection. Uh, but it, it is something we, we're, we're welcoming the, the public involvement on that. So if anyone has any ideas, I mean, obviously we've, we've had multiple events before in the past. If somebody who just wants to come in and sit down, give us an idea, give us a hand uh, putting something together, we're, we're welcome to that idea. So please feel free to reach out. Uh, I guess I'll say so. Sandy doesn't receive any more phone calls for right now, but uh, you can feel free to reach out to my office. You can certainly reach out to Sandy's. Uh, but uh, that is something we would like to work on uh, to get, uh, together. And then, um, actually, I don't know if Sherry would like to say anything tonight. Uh, you know, is, is for, for now, did you want to report anything tonight? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll welcome Sherry up. She's been the, uh, she, I appointed her as the town authority. She's been working on a lot of things. She's got a bunch of great ideas. I stated this before. Um, but I'll let her kind of have a few minutes to let everybody know what she's working on. Do I have to say my name and my address? No, not at all. <laughs> Sherry Clue. <Clinton. laughs> I don't know if doesn't know. <laughs> um, I've been a member of the Boston Historical Society for about 10 years. And so I really want to thank you for the opportunity to let me serve the town as a town historian for the next for the rest of 2018. I put a couple ideas together that encompass two pages. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a brainstormer, so these are just some things that I thought I, I could try to work on. Um, a couple of years ago, I was interested in possibly renaming South Boston Park as Carrie Elger Park. The Carrie family and the Elger family were both pioneers in the town. They are our ancestors, and they held positions of power and service for many generations. And I think it would be really nice to honor them by renaming the, the South Boston Park in their name. It's just one idea. Uh, whoa, excuse me. Since I have been a, a member of the Boston Historical Society for 10 years, I, I see the things that really need to be done to bring us back into the 21st century. So um, one of the things, I'd like to do activities that would promote the fact that we have a viable and important museum in town. A lot of people don't know we have a museum, and it's a pretty awesome museum, actually. Um, I want to start sending out flyers to residents and, and telling them about the museum and inviting them to come and to become members. Um, next thing I wrote down was I'd like to research the possibility of moving the Western New York South Town Scenic Byway marker that's back by the fish pond. Um, I was on that committee for four years with the Western New York uh, South Town um, Scenic Byway. And the intention of that marker was to be in front of the town hall, where people who are visiting, um, even for just a short time, can see what it says. And I also kind of wrote and took the pictures <laughs> that are on the marker. <laughs> so I, I'd like to see about possibly moving it from its present location to the front of the building. Um, one of the things that uh, the museum needs is digitizing. Like I said, bring it into the 21st century. Um, there are hundreds of photographs, um, numerous binders full of newspaper articles from the 1950s going forward. There's hundreds of road warrants that hold the name of every man who owned property in Boston from early 1820s till now. Then there's dozens of poll books 
that hold the record of every man who voted in the town of Boston from the 1800s to the 1900s. Things like that take up a lot of room and they really need to be digitized somehow. It's a huge project, but I'd like to try to get a start on that. Um, I want to try to get the town historian involved again into the fourth grade curriculum at Boston Valley. Uh, many years ago, it used to be a regular thing. They would study local history during a certain portion of the year, and we even had um, bus trips to the museum for the fourth graders. So I'd like to kind of look into how we can do that again. And uh, I would be more than happy to um, go to their to the school and give a, a presentation. A couple years ago I did it, and um, I showed them pictures of what school children looked like in the 1800s, and it was, it was quite a change, and they had all kinds of questions. It was really a lot of fun. Um, another thing that I've been thinking about doing is to seek out the elders in our community, people who have lived here all their lives, whose families have been here for, for generations. And I'd like to make an appointment with them and sit down and record their memories. Memories are gone after that person has passed away. And there's, there's nothing like listening to somebody tell a story. Well, the story used to be like this, and oh, Mr. So-and-so used to treat me with you know candy and and all that stuff, and I, I really like to try to find some people who can help me put that down in a record, just for posterity. So if anybody wanted to see what life was like at the uh, Boston Post Office when it was still at the corner store, you know, we'll, we'll have something like that that people can read. And um, oh, one thing that I've been doing for a couple of years I've been repainting the historical markers around town that really need it. So I've, I've done uh, the one down in the corner right over here. I did the one in front of the museum. And um, I think the one in front of the North Boston Fire Hall, they were having some troubles with it, with it fading. So if, if anybody wants me to attempt that, I'll do it in the summertime. <laughs> no problem. I enjoy doing it. And um, my ultimate goal, I don't know how long it'll take, but I want to get the community more interested in the history of the town and have more community togetherness. And it's so doing to make the museum so important that possibly someday we could think about even moving into a newer building that has parking for people, because right now we have no parking in front of the museum, just down the street. So um, that would be the most challenging goal, and I hope to work on it along, along the way. And if anybody has any um, other ideas, I'm open to them. My email address is townofbostonhistorian at gmail.com. So I'm open to any suggestions. And thank you again for giving me this opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything at all to make a motion? All right, so I'll make a motion to close the meeting. Second. Councilman Munger? Yes. Councilman Carter Keeney? Yes. Supervisor Keeney? Yes. Councilman Munger? Yes. Motion carried.